Hi, my name is Margaret Marino and I'm a senior at Fort Hayes State. I'm getting my degree in um, elementary education with a minor in special education. After I finish this, I'm going to go on and get my master's and my certificate in low incident special education. I currently work in um, low incident special education as a para. I've been in the room for five years. I work with students with intellectual disabilities. Uh, it's a fabulous room. We have two teachers, nine adults, so we we are very fortunate. Um, we have about 20 kids. It's a great place to be, great room. Um, I just had my 11th wedding, of, wedding anniversary. I'm very fortunate. My husband is incredibly supportive. I would not have been able to make it as far as I have in school if he was not as supportive and as wonderfully understanding um, as he is. He has uh, done extra laundry and proofread papers and gotten me up after two hours of sleep and done everything else in the world to, to make sure I'm successful. So I am incredibly thankful that I have had his support through this journey. Um, my first piece of assisted technology what is for a student, and this student isn't necessarily on an IEP or a 504 plan. This can be um, any student, especially in secondary um, or in a middle school who ha is, is having mobility problems. Um, and this is just a dollar store um, grabber. So I'm going to throw something on the floor here. Okay, I'll put some post-its on the floor. So this allows someone who um, may be wheelchair bound or in case of like a middle school or high school, they have a lot of sports injuries and that's just going to give them the independence to pick that up. Now so the environment is going to be in, in the classroom setting. This could also be used in a cafeteria setting. Now obviously I got this at the dollar store so it's not going to pick up things that are heavy duty and it's not going to hold up against some real rough wear and tear. You can get ones that are very well made. This one's not. Um, but it will help create independence. When we start working with students who are going to have mobility issues for the rest of their lives, we have to teach those students and force those students to learn independent skills from a very young age. Um, we cannot create a culture of dependence. Um, and so it is very important that starting in first grade in kindergarten, they clean, they pick up their own glue, they pick up their own Kleenex, because uh, the only way they will be able to live independently is if they are able to do those things for themselves as an adult. And so a simple thing like this can make a, a very large difference in the life of one of our students. And for a student who is not in a special education curriculum um, but has injured an, a knee in, or in some sort of accident, uh, this is going to be a, a very important tool for the six to eight weeks that he or she is not able to have that mobility that the student's used to. The second piece of assistive technology that um, I'm going to show you is um, meant for a student who, and of course mo most of the students I work with um, have uh, intellectual disabilities and this student, this uh, we use with a student who um, we always take this whiteboard, and we use the whiteboard here and it always goes up for inclusion time. Uh, the one we use is actually a little bit larger but not much uh, and this student has very slow processing skills and so any time that the teacher uses technology and has something on the on the whiteboard, the student's processing time does not allow the student to get the words from the board back to the page, to the board back to the page. And so uh, whoever is up there with that student can just write down the word list, write down the color words, write down whatever pertinent information is up there and then the student can take a step back and then can copy those things off as necessary. But it is uh, just one step too far for the student to do both of those things. And so this is a very simple method to give the student just a little bit more inclusion time 
and um, it, is, it is also a tool, a whiteboard is also a tool that is very commonly used for students with visual impairments. Um, and when you have students with visual impairments, the, the use of a whiteboard can be part of a very uh, complex system that works wonders. Um, but this tool, and, and the way we have used it, uh, helps students with, with tracing and with visual, uh, with uh, processing, uh, with processing impairments very well. Um, and once again, I said, oh, the, the environment in that one was inclusion. Uh, so the last one I wanted to talk about was, and this one, once again, we've used for just about everything. Uh, this can be used with, um, there's three different sets of, of students who really I have seen benefit from this piece of assistive technology. Um, the first are students with problems with grips. So um, we've used it with a child with fragile X and a child, two children with cerebral palsy and then a child with MS. So, um, and then the other students that we have used it with are students who are autistic and then also um, students who have ADHD. So what I did is I took a pool noodle, cut part of the pool noodle off, and then just put a dry erase marker. You can put a marker, put a pencil, you can put all sorts of things in the pool noodle. Um, so it works very well for students with the cerebral palsy or the fragile X or um, other medical issues because it, it does not force the student to have a smaller grip. It allows for a wider grip. And, and that one's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the students who are autistic, it works very well because this is a great sensory tool. It has a, a nice feel. It has a nice shine. Um, you can roll it. It's, it's a fabulous sensory tool. And um, so in that way it also works as a fidget. And it also, at the same time when you have it glued or secured in there, we always have them secured in there, um, when you're using it, so for a child with, with ADHD, for a child with, um, you can, you can move, you can let your hand move, you can um, get your, your body movement out, which is uh, very important for children with ADHD who need to, need to move. You can let them move and squeeze and get that energy out while they're still sitting and um, att attending a task. So the, the task that this would be used for would obviously be writing or coloring, depending on what you want to do with it. You can put a pencil in or you can put a marker in. Um, so this would be, the task would be writing. And the environment would be in the, in the classroom setting. Um, there are times when, you know, you're not going to write in the classroom, but this could obviously be something that can be taken home. Uh, so this is something that's easily adaptable to a home setting where if you want to have your children draw, put on a whiteboard at home, this is something that, you know, a teacher can easily say, hey, take this home, it's a pool noodle, um, and there you go. So the environment could very easily be switched to a home setting with this as well. Uh, thank you very much for listening to my video. I hope that it was enjoyable and educational. And I look forward to next week. Thank you.